This video is brought to you by Hit Point Press and their Big Bad Booklet series, a monthly zine about boss monsters for 5th edition. This month, come meet Captain Fomini, a vampire who can harness the power of the high seas with an unquenchable thirst for revenge. Beware the ship with the bloodstained sails, landlubbers. It may be the last thing you ever see. Will you walk the plank or can you knock Captain Fomini's plans off course? Subscribe today at BigBads.com. Jeremy, good morning. Good evening <laughs> morning. for you. No, let me start that over. Yeah, it's it's morning here, evening there. It's different this time than the usual. Okay, let's try it again. Jeremy, thank you for joining me today. It's tonight over here in Bangkok, but yeah, very glad to be talking to you, Theo. Yeah, why don't we start with that? So you are in Bangkok. How long have you been there? Um, I moved back here in January um, during the pandemic, and I'm currently kind of sheltering in place here monitoring the situation and uh, living with my husband here for a while. So, yeah. Well, what brings you to Bangkok? Um, him, basically. <laughs> he runs aerial dance studios over here in Bangkok. So I'm hiding out and uh, working remotely and enjoying my time in Bangkok where uh, I was living in Los Angeles before and it, the housing prices are really expensive. And it was all remote work because of the pandemic. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to go live over there on that side of the world for a while. Oh, I understand that. And, but I know that <laughs> when you were in Los Angeles, we were neighbors for a little while. I was over I in Bakersfield. We never got to see each other. <laughs> I know. We, um, well, we had pandemics and everything else. And all shelter in place for like most of the time I was in California. But uh, one of the reasons that I really wanted to bring you on to this is because I'm trying to bring together the people in my life who have put a lot of their time and effort into helping others. And that was one of your big things that you did in Los Angeles. You were very much involved yeah. in public, public transportation over there. I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about your work. Sure, sure. What I did, um, I was president of a nonprofit organization called Rail LA. And it was a transportation advocacy nonprofit that really tried to, basically I was trying to use my creative talents um, in designing events to get Angelinos who were very, I mean, I, I don't know if you've been, you've been to Los Angeles, right? It's Couple very times. centered on, yeah, it's very, everyone's very focused on cars, right? The, the city yeah. originally was built around trains, but now it's all cars. And so a lot of the work that we were doing was trying to get people to embrace getting out of their car and trying using the transportation infrastructure that's in place there um, as it was continually expanding um, and getting enthusiasm from the younger generations and just from people who aren't necessarily economically incentivized to use transportation, but could use public transportation to get around um, as a benefit to their lives. And also the more of those people that get involved the more the standard raises um, for the city. So people start to speak out about, you know, this isn't the way it should be. And it improves quality of life for everybody. So when it's when transportation is serving a diverse population, those are the cities I love. I mean, you think about New York, um, Bangkok, like everybody takes the train in Bangkok. So um, I, that's what I was trying to move Los Angeles towards is a city where everybody embraces the public transportation infrastructure. And you touched on for a minute there, your creative talents. Why don't you tell us a little bit about more sure. what you've been doing for a living for the past couple of years, past yeah, couple I'm years a, now. <laughs> I'm a, a bit of a renaissance man in that I am an actor, um, producer, director. Um, I do a lot of different entertainment type of work. Um, and I'm a writer. I, I just worked on a, a feature length film that we're trying to get produced hopefully this year. Um, the pandemic may change that timeline a little bit, but um, yeah, I'm very involved deeply in performing arts, creative arts, um, and just my passion since I was a little kid has always been performing. 
Um, so I just, my whole life, I've loved theater, loved film, loves television and um, can't see anything else for my life that I'd be doing except for that. Um, so it was cool to use those talents to help others um, by thinking about like, how do you create a walk-in type of environment similar to like Disneyland does. It's a very produced experience, but do that with public transportation. Like how can we produce a tour that shows off the city and gets people really excited about, about transit? It was, it was really, really fun stuff that we did. Um, we got dressed up in 1930s, like vintage clothes and did a whole old Hollywood style transit ride um, where we went to historical spots in Hollywood and throughout Los Angeles and, and ended uh, at some bars that are some of the most beautiful vintage cocktail bars in, in LA. And so that type of stuff is, it was completely outside of what, I think that the city was doing at the time in terms of what they considered advocacy. At that time, they were really focused on, you know, we need to show up at, and make sure that we're pushing trains for people who already ride trains. But I was pushing trains for people who weren't riding the trains um, in a very creative way and very fun way. Um, and, and it's actually sparked, they started new programs based on the work that I did in LA. So it's, it was very inspiring to see things really change, um, as the city became more connected. And as far as Dungeons and Dragons goes, this is something that's new to your life. I imagine <laughs> completely being, new, but a little bit involved, overwhelmed. I'm not going to lie. You know, I'm just like, what is all this stuff? But it's super fun. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons, though, that I thought would be great to have you on is because D&D &D can be intimidating for people who have never played it before. Um, I know the first time I played it, I had no idea what I was doing. Things like I hadn't seen things like Critical Role or the other popular shows. And so I just yeah. kind of went in with no uh, conception of what to do. But it's not a hard thing to really jump into if you can just kind of let your creative juices flow and just live in the moment. So what have you thought about it so far? Well, I'm full of creative juices, so I'll definitely be flowing. Um, it's been really fun. It's been really, really fun. I've enjoyed trying to figure out characters and, and storylines and um, just meeting different people, honestly, has been the most fun, is seeing people from all over the world. I'm, I'm here in Bangkok, but I'm interacting with you in, in uh, Houston and then, then all over, all over the world. And so that's been really, really fun is just getting together and meeting your friends and, and having these, these online games. I know that's not necessarily a staple of D&D. I know a lot, oftentimes people get together in a group in a home and do, do it with real dice. But this, this virtual format has been really, really wonderful um, to be able to feel like we're playing a game during the pandemic, which keeps us very apart. Um, and separated. I felt, yeah. I felt very close to you um, these yeah. last couple of weeks, and that's been lovely. I think for a lot of us over the past year, maybe a lot of folks watching this video, like the online way is the only way to play these days. And for some of us, it's been the, the majority of our social interactions is, is getting together right. and living different lives in different worlds where there aren't hopefully pandemics. There's maybe other major problems like liches trying to take over the world or dragons burning down cities, but at least there's not pandemics. So right. that's been awesome too. But why don't you tell us a little bit about your character in this adventure? Well, I'm an actor, so I obviously uh, got really into this part where you said, you're developing your own character. So I was mm -hmm. very excited. Um, basically, my, my character's name is Oren. He is a forest gnome, and he grew up in a tree in the middle of the forest, um, hidden in the hollow base. Not, not inside of a tree, he's not that small, but like that's the entrance to this colony of, of forest gnomes in the forest. And um, his family stays pretty hidden and it's a very secretive type of society. And so my question for, for Oren was what, what inspired him to travel? And very much like me, Oren loves seeing the world. He, he got a little taste um, and was getting the travel bug um, even very, very young. He, he escaped and ran outside and, and saw things and was like, I, I love this. And uh, his parents knew and tried to stop him. Um, but eventually it, it went out. He has to travel. It's, it's in his blood. Um, and he's very curious and wants to see the world. 
And so he left um, at age 16. He packed up his his bags and said bye to his mom and dad. And they knew he was leaving. It wasn't like he snuck out in the middle of the night. Um, it was a very difficult goodbye because he loves his family very dearly. He's Oren is full of heart. Um, he really believes that he can befriend almost anyone, sometimes to his own detriment. He really, really believes in the power of love and the power of, of sharing and community. Um, he's very tethered to his family. So he often goes back to visit, um, but, but he wouldn't be being himself if he wasn't traveling. And so I, I really brought that story partially from my own life, um, but partially, but I really wanted him to have this kind of essential core of goodness and, and belief in humanity and um, belief in all creatures, right? This, this, um, this character who really has this explosive heart. Um, and so that, that's who Oren is um, and who he'll be as he's playing the game. He's definitely got himself into plenty of trouble and has learned, um, but he can be a bit naive and, and always tries to see the good in people. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to getting to know him better. And we had our session zero just a few days ago where we got to really see how our, our characters all connected to each other. Uh, I'm looking oh my forward gosh, to so exciting. <laughs> that was fun. I thought that was a really good session zero. I'm um, so excited. And our first game is going to be April 19th at 9 p.m. Eastern time over on twitch.tv slash Gilding Light. I hope you will all join us there, see Oren, and see our other characters begin their adventure. Um, Jeremy, anything you want to leave us with as we get ready for our first session? I just want to say thank you. Um, this is such a fun, exciting way to explore um, the world and travel. I'm, I'm right now, Bangkok just got hit with a second wave, maybe third wave. I'm not sure how many waves I've been here, uh, but th there's another wave of the virus here right now. Um, we had six people at our local market um, contract COVID. So we're quarantining. And so this is a way for me to get outside and explore through D&D, &D, even though I'm at home right now. Um, and so I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful for the connectivity of, of all of this, the technology and um, for this opportunity to connect with you. Um, we go way back. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I've known you the longest out of everybody in the cast. Yeah, yeah. I've known you I, since I you were you in I high school, right? High yeah. school, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it feels a bit like a homecoming, even though We'll be adventuring from other sides of the world. So it's that's great. It, I'm very, very happy and excited. I am too. Thank you for going on this journey with me. Um, it should be a ton of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. And who knows, maybe when this little adventure is over, we'll keep adventuring in some way together in the future. That would be too. great. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Well, Jeremy, thank you again for joining us. Don't forget to tune in on Twitch on Monday. You can see how the adventure gets started, and we'll also have that session zero posting soon, so you can see how the party came together. But for now, everybody, please stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. See you, Theo.